Hey, Sider Crusaders, look forward to it all weekend, mostly because people all week ask me questions about COVID. And I was like, I don't know, but we're going to talk to the professor. Coming up, Professor uh, Vincent Racaniello. He's the professor of virology at Columbia University, and you have to watch his podcast. It's called This Week in Virology, and you can get that at microbe.tv. Uh, professor, hello, sir. Good morning. And to you, uh, we got to talk about Regeneron. Um, what do we know? They, they have to be pretty happy with how things went. I, I, my mind is blown when you told us last week that they only did that one trial with 275 people. So it's very possible that the president of the United States was the 276th person to take this treatment. Is that like, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. And I asked my clinical uh, consultant what he thought, and he said he was totally okay giving the president that uh, monoclonal. So wow. uh, it looks pretty good. Let's talk about this vaccine in general. I'm, I'm blown away with where we are on this vaccine development. Have you ever seen or read anything like this? No, this is unprecedented. The rate at which we're making vaccines, uh, and, and there are two kinds of vaccines that we're making, right? There's the active vaccines where they inject uh, like an mRNA or a virus into you, and passive vaccines, which is what Regeneron has, monoclonals. They give you the products of the immune response. We've never done it this quickly. Just for some perspective, we still don't have an AIDS vaccine, and we're working since 1985. Yeah, yeah. Polio vaccine took 50 years. Most vaccines take 10 years or so to do it. And this is less than a year. We have candidates and people. And everyone should appreciate this is because science has been really supported in the U.S. and has got everything to the point where we can do this. And uh, mm. I think we should really be in appreciation of that because it's really unprecedented that we can make this uh, so quickly. How many people do you think are working on that worldwide in all the different pharmaceutical companies and laboratories? Probably thousands of people, maybe tens of thousands of people. Um, uh, you know, yeah. the, the, the universities have done a lot of the research that led to this. And now, of course, to actually make the vaccine, we hand it to the pharmaceutical companies. And those companies, you know, just most of them have just started in January because you don't make a product unless there's a market for it, right? The companies uh, exist because they can make money. So uh, some of them have a, a background. Some of them have made vaccines before, but others haven't made vaccines. So it's really amazing that they can get into this game so quickly. Yeah, and you bring up, you know, even just AIDS and polio. I'm going back to like 1500. Like there was no like vaccine. <laughs> I mean, like there wasn't even a, they didn't even know oh. what it was. And, and oh, you think about that listen, versus here. The first here. vaccine that we think of was 1700s uh, smallpox vaccine. But even then we didn't know what a virus was. We didn't know what bacterium was. That didn't happen until the end of the uh, 1800s. So this is all pretty new stuff. Wow. That was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.